In today's lesson, we're going to be solving quadratics using the quadratic formula. So there are times when a quadratic equation cannot be solved by factoring. So you'll have an equation that is not factorable. And one of the things that you can do to solve the, for the roots of the equation is you can use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is this right here. It's a formula where you can plug in values for A, B, and C, and you can solve for your x-intercept or your, your x-intercepts or your quadratic roots. And I have a little song that might help you remember this quadratic formula. I actually learned it in high school and I still remember it. So if you don't remember anything from Algebra 1, you will probably remember this little tune. It goes like this. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a and so that's just a little something that might help you remember this formula so today we're since we're just being introduced to the quadratic formula we're actually going to use the skeleton and all we're going to do with this skeleton when you think of a skeleton you think of just the bones of something right so all we're going to be doing today is substituting values in for a b and c in our quadratic formula and we're just gonna leave it there. So the directions for the next set of notes says write each equation in standard form, which looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c, and then we're just gonna substitute in the values for a, b, and c. So let's look at problem number one. This is obviously already written in standard form, and again, if nothing is in front of a variable, you can put a one there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is identify a, b, and c. a in number one is one, b is negative 2 and c is positive 4. So in our skeleton what you have is every variable has been replaced with a set of parentheses. Okay this is a really good strategy for substituting in values for variables. So every variable has been replaced with a set of parentheses. We're going to put the values of those variables inside those parentheses. So remember, this is A, this is B, and this is C. And when I plug in those values, I'm going to be singing my little song. So on this one, X equals the opposite of B. So I'm going to put a B in there. Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. So I'm going to put a 1 and a 4 there. All over 2A. And all we're doing is plugging in the values for A, B, and C. And that's all we're going to do in this section. So let's do number two. First, let's identify A, B, and C. And I can do that because it's already in standard form. So it's the value for A. It's 2. B is negative 3. And C is 1. And now let's just plug in our values in our quadratic formula. And this skeleton looks exactly the same as it did on number one. right? The bones are the same. I've just taken out the variables and replaced them with parentheses. So now let's do this. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And there you go. Let's go on to number three. Number three. Again, is this in standard form? It sure is. So let's identify A, B, and C. And I'm going to put a one there. If nothing is in front of a variable, you can always put a 1 there. So I'm going to plug in 1 for A, 3 for B, and negative 7 for C. Remember, sign in front goes with the number, and now let's just plug in our values. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And there you go. We're just plugging it into our formula. On number four, let's do the same thing. What's the value of A? It's three. What about B? There's no X term, which means the value of B is zero. And C, what is that? It's 10. So now let's plug it into our quadratic formula skeleton. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. And obviously, I'm doing it much faster each time. But if you need to stop, slow down, fast forward, whatever, you can do that since this is a tutorial video. So let's go on to the next 
section. Let's talk about this new vocabulary word, lots of vocabulary words in your quadratics unit. This is the discriminant, okay? That's what this vocabulary term is. And in a quadratic equation, the discriminant tells you what types of roots the quadratic has. Okay, the discriminant is this right here. B squared minus 4AC. What part is that? That's the part that's underneath the square root. It comes from the quadratic formula. And here is the information that that gives you. If that discriminant is a number that is greater than zero, that means your discriminant, if it's positive, when you simplify what's underneath the square root, if it's a positive number, meaning greater than zero, that means you'll have two real roots. What does that mean? That means your quadratic will really cross the x-axis twice. So for example, it might look something like this, right? That's a, an example of a quadratic that has two real roots. If your quadratic, or if your discriminant, I'm sorry, is exactly zero, it's equal to zero, that means you'll have one real root. So that looks like this, right? Where your vertex is on the x-axis. So that's what that will tell you if your discriminant is equal to zero. Now, if it's less than zero, that means when you simplify what's underneath the radical, and you get a negative number, that's d is less than zero, your discriminant is less than zero, that means you have zero real roots. So that would be maybe a quadratic that looks like this. Okay, so it's just, you know, simplifying a little bit and seeing what information this formula will give you. And that is the discriminant and that's what it'll tell you. So here's what we're gonna do. Directions for this next section, and I'm going to change colors here just because I want to. It says write each equation in standard form, then substitute the values for A, B, and C. Determine the value of the discriminant. So now we're doing what we just did, but now we're going to simplify what's underneath the radical and write the number of solutions in the box provided. So obviously we're going to be writing 0, 1, or 2 in the box. So on number 1. Well, what do I need to do first? I need to put it in standard form. So I'm going to move this 15 over and I get x squared minus 8x minus 15 equals 0. So we need to set our quadratic equal to 0. And then let's identify a, b, and c. So what's the value of a? 1, b is negative 8, and c is negative 15. Let's take those values, plug them into our quadratic formula the skeleton that we have here. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c all over 2a. And there you go. That's what we just did. But now we need to do a little bit extra. That little bit extra tells us that we need to simplify this part right here. b squared minus 4ac that's our discriminant. So let's simplify it using our order of operations. Negative 8 squared, that's what I need to do first. What is that? Positive 64. Then negative 4 times 1 times negative 15 is what? Positive 60. Then 64 plus 60 is 124. Our discriminant is 124. What does that tell us? Well, it's greater than zero, our discriminant is positive, which means this quadratic will have two real roots. So if we graphed this on our coordinate plane, it would, ha it would really cross the x-axis twice. Let's go to number two. Is it in standard form? It sure is. So let's identify A, B, and C. A is one, B is negative five, and C is 20. And now let's plug it into our quadratic formula skeleton. Hopefully you're getting more comfortable with this. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Geez Louise, I feel like I'm getting worse and worse singing this. But there we go. And now what do we do now? We've got it entered. And now I'm going to simplify my discriminant. We're going to simplify it using our order of operations. 
negative 5 squared is positive 25. Negative 4 times 1 times 20 is negative 80. 25 minus 80 is negative 55. My discriminant is negative 55. So what does that tell me about the roots of this quadratic? It will have zero real roots. It will not really cross the x-axis. Okay, so if you graph that on a coordinate plane, it will not cross the x-axis. That's zero real roots. Let's go to number three. What do I need to do first on number three? I need to put it in standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5x and I'm going to add 2 and basically move those to the other side. So it'll look like this equals 0. So now we've put our quadratic in standard form and we can identify a, b, and c. So the value of a is 3, the value of b is 5, and the value of c is Two, and now we're going to plug it into our quadratic formula skeleton. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then now we're going to simplify our discriminant. We're going to figure out our discriminant right here. So what am I going to do? 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times 3 times 2 is negative 24. So I write negative 24 and that becomes minus 24. 25 minus 24 is 1. Our discriminant is positive, which means this quadratic will have how many roots? Two real roots. It will really cross the x-axis twice. Let's go on to number 4, last one on this set of notes. It's in standard form. Awesome. Let's identify a, b, and c. What's a? 1, b is negative 8, c is 16, and now we're going to plug these values into our quadratic formula skeleton. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then we're going to simplify our discriminant so we can see how many roots this quadratic has. Negative 8 squared is what? 64. Negative 4 times 1 times 16 is negative 64, so minus 64, which means our discriminant is 0. And what does that tell us about the roots of this quadratic? It will have one real root, okay? one real solution. And that concludes your notes over day one of solving quadratics using the quadratic formula. This was your quadratic formula skeleton. And I hope it was helpful.